Welcome everyone, my name is Eric McLaughlin, I'm the astronomer for the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory, and this is Systems Are Go. In this series of videos, we aim to give you a chance to see a lot of the images and data that are made a bit more passively with the observatory. What you're seeing right now are images from our All Sky camera. This camera is active every night, and as it takes images throughout the night, you can see a lot of different phenomena. For example, in many of this month's time lapses from our All Sky camera, you'll be able to spot a couple of lights to the south. Those are Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter is further west than Saturn right now, and from night to night, you'll find them progressively eastward at the same time. And likewise, you might notice a little bit of haze just near them. This haze is not cloud cover, rather it is actually the brightest section of the Milky Way as seen from the Earth. It forms a nice stripe across our sky. Moreover, you should keep an eye out for how the moon is shifting over the course of the month as it orbits around the Earth. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy these nice views of our night skies. As we wrap up with our All Sky camera, I'll touch base with you again to talk a little bit more about some data from our weather station.
of these next set of plots are really nice ones to get a grasp of what actually happened temperature and humidity wise here in the valley. Rather than looking ahead with a forecast and trying to predict the weather, it's always interesting to look back and see what we actually got. And when you look at these, you can note a few things. There was a, well, put quotes around it, a cold front in early June. You can still see that in this data. And these plots were generated by Annie Poy, our summer intern. And as we move on into the rest of summer, we will have more plots which share other interesting viewpoints on the weather data that we've been collecting. Now we'll go ahead and transition to our views from our solar telescope. Our solar telescope is an H-alpha telescope, that is short for hydrogen alpha. It is a telescope which filters out everything except a very specific wavelength of red light, hence why this image is so red. Now, I've been working a lot with this system since March because I work to actually program a fully automated guiding and imaging system for this telescope to allow us to generate these views here. This involved a significant amount of programming, which worked for the most part. However, you will note in a number of these time lapses that the sun will get a bit dimmer in this red true color view. However, that is not the sun actually getting dimmer in most cases. Uh, that is actually partly because, well, when I started writing this program back in March, it was substantially cooler and the camera on the telescope did not have what are called hot pixels coming out of it. And those hot pixels cause a particular value to go all the way to the maximum value or near it. And as a result, the image scaling I had set up at the time would, well, base its scaling off the wrong value. Towards the end, you can see I have corrected that issue and you'll have more bright views of the sun throughout. Of course, the other thing you will note is, well, relatively little activity on the sun. That low activity is because we are at what is called solar minimum, meaning there are very few sunspots on the sun, if any. And in fact, you'll only see one in this entire set of time lapses. Now, sunspots are themselves areas where there is a high concentration of the sun's magnetic field passing through the surface, causing it to cool down slightly and thus appear dimmer than the rest of the sun. Thus, if the magnetic field of the sun is in a relatively simple and stable state, there will not be any visible sunspots. Now, I'm going to let you enjoy these views here. We've got another version of these views that actually pulls out a little bit more detail that we'll show you as soon as this set is done. Now we will transition to our pseudo color view of our solar telescope's time-lapsed images. The reason why we call it pseudo color is because what we've done is we've taken the very red image, treated it as though it was a black and white image, and then colorized it in such a way to pull out details. This particular color map is one that is native to Python's matplotlib 
package. It is known as Inferno, and it is actually really important in its design. It is a perceptually uniform color map, meaning that our mind will perceive the transition from its darkest colors to its lightest colors in a uniform way. This is not something that can be said of those typical rainbow type color maps you'll see in a number of different applications you might commonly encounter. Moreover, this perceptually uniform color map is also designed in such a way that it is actually intended to be colorblind friendly. So if you have any issues with colorblindness, the colors chosen here are intended to ensure you can still see detail on the sun. So I'll let you enjoy these views and touch base with you as we come to a close afterwards. Enjoy. And this brings us to the end of Systems Argo. We hope you've enjoyed this time here, and we also want to give a special thank you to the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory Foundation. Now, as we're wrapping up, uh, if you'd like to see some of our other videos, they will be linked here. You can also subscribe to our YouTube page, as well as sign up for our e-newsletter at ranchomiragelibrary.org. And finally, keep on looking up.